So today we're going to talk about abnormal first trimester pregnancy. These are patients who frequently present to us in an acute care setting or in our offices as a work-in appointment. And patients who are normal and not having any symptoms can certainly proceed with routine prenatal care. However, patients who have abnormalities of that pregnancy are going to present to us with bleeding plus or minus pain. So it's important because about 30% of patients will present with these symptoms who become pregnant. It's very important for us to be able to thoroughly and efficiently evaluate these patients. So when I'm approached by a patient who has these symptoms, the first thing I do is the eyeball. The reason why the eyeball test is very important is if your patient fails the eyeball test, in other words, she is acutely ill, then you're going to need to make sure that your patient's in the appropriate setting. So if she's in your office, she needs to get to a hospital, to an acute care facility. You would also need to make sure that you are able to give IV fluids, say in the emergency room. You want to make sure you have appropriate lines or IVs, maybe two IVs of large bore would be most appropriate. You may need to go ahead and transfuse the patient if she is unstable. And during that period of time, you can also get an idea of does this patient have an acute abdomen or if you look between uh, the bed covers and look at the uh, pad on your bed, you can see if the patient is having um, a hemorrhage, say from a miscarriage. Based on that, you would certainly need to collect your resources in terms of people and different disciplines that you would need. But whether the patient has an acute abdomen or a vaginal hemorrhage, most likely from miscarriage, she may need operating room intervention via either DNC or laparoscopy, depending on what you find. So once you kind of pass the eyeball test, then it's time for a history and physical exam. And certainly you would want to focus on the signs and symptoms of presentation, how much bleeding, how long, um, certainly all the descriptors of the pain if the patient's been having pain. But you also need a GYN history. So things like history of STDs. If the patient has had any sort of pelvic surgery. What is she using for contraception, if anything? Was this a planned pregnancy? And you also want to know her OB history. Has she ever had an ectopic pregnancy? Or is there something else in her history that would sway you one way or the other in terms of whether she's having a miscarriage or an ectopic pregnancy? You also want to focus your physical exam on your general appearance, your cardiovascular exam, your pulmonary exam. Your abdominal exam is very important. Does she have rebound or guarding? Is the abdomen distended or is it nice and soft and fairly non-tender? And then you have your pelvic exam. 
you'd certainly want to know how much bleeding. What is the status of the cervical os? And unless the patient is exquisitely tender, you should be able to get some idea of uterine size. But of course, this also depends on the body habitus of the patient. So you do want to do a thorough exam in order to discern all this information. Now the patient is acutely ill and she has exquisite abdominal tenderness, then, an, then a pelvic exam is not going to necessarily change what you know about that patient in the absence of uh, hemorrhage from the vagina. So you have to decide in that situation whether you need the pelvic exam or is it going to cause a lot of pain for the patient for not much gain in terms of your information that you need to care for her. So we want to get some labs, of course. We love to get labs. I like to have a CBC without a differential. I don't see that the differential helps me at all unless I'm worried about the patient being infected. And then I do need to know the patient's blood type and RH. Now many patients have gotten their care at our facility for quite some time and they may have delivered previous babies with us. So it's important to possibly save some money in the healthcare system and look in the computer first to see what the patient's blood type is. If they're RH positive, then that's good to know. You know the patient's not going to need Rogan. If the patient is RH negative, then even in the face of first trimester pregnancy and, in, and very early first trimester pregnancy, we do want to give Rogan, and we give that in a dose of 50 micrograms. The final test I want to get is a pelvic ultrasound. So all patients who present with symptoms of abnormal first trimester pregnancy get a pelvic ultrasound. That doesn't mean that the ultrasound has to be done in the middle of the night. But what it does mean is a plan needs to be made for pelvic ultrasound to be performed when it's appropriate to do so. So if it's on the weekend or in the middle of the night and the patient's completely stable and is not having any acute symptoms at all, no heavy bleeding, no severe pain, then that ultrasound could be scheduled for the next business day without any harm to the patient at all.